I'm going to begin with a review of mathematical logic. To skip this and go straight to the solution, look for a link in the video description. In math, a logic statement is either true or false. An example of a statement, which I'm calling A, is you are human. Another statement, which I'm calling B, is you have a heart. We can represent if A, then B, in terms of the statement, if you are human, then you have a heart. We can also abbreviate this with A, right arrow, B, and you'll hear people say A implies B, which is also equivalent. The problem statement includes if and only if. This is abbreviated IFF. We can also abbreviate this as A implies B and B implies A with this double arrow. This actually represents two statements, A implies B and B implies A like this. We can talk about the negations of these statements by putting a line in front of the A. This reads as not A, and in this case it means you are not human. Not B would read as you do not have a heart. An important property of implication statements is that they are equivalent to its contrapositive. So for example, A implies B is equivalent to its contrapositive, which is not B implies not A. We read this as if you are human, then you have a heart, which is equivalent to if you don't have a heart, then you are not human. Note that an implication like A implies B, this is not equivalent to its converse, which is not A implies not B. Not A implies not B reads as, if you are not human, then you do not have a heart. This statement is false because other animals do have a heart, so you can't make this equivalence. Let's take a look at truth tables. Statements can be either true or false, so we can find some properties of statements taken in combination. Let's say we have a statement we'll label P and another one that's labeled Q. Either both of these statements are true, or one of them is false, or the other is false, or both of them are false. We use this notation to read as and. P and Q is true only if both P is true and Q is true. If either one of these are false, then then P and Q is false, and if both of them are false, P and Q is false. Let's take the negation of P and Q. That's going to be the opposite of everything in the third column. So false, true, true, true. And I want to compare it to not P and not Q. Not P again is the opposite of everything in the P column. So this will be false, false, true, true. Not Q is the opposite of everything in the second column. I want this column to be not P or not Q. This down arrow is shorthand for or. An or statement is true if one or the other of the two expressions are true. So for example, Example, when not P and not Q are both false, this statement is false. But if one of either not P or not Q is true, then this statement is true. So this is true and this is true. If both of them are true, then not P and not Q is true as well. Let's do P or Q, and we'll look at the first two columns. This is true, 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 and when both of them are false, this is false. Not P or Q is just the opposite, and then our final one is not P and not Q. That's only true if the two values in these two columns are both true. So here we have false and false. The second row is false because we need both of them to be true, and the same with the third. Since not P and not Q are true in the fourth row, they're also true here. I'd like to point out that we have the same result in these two columns. That is not P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. And we'll be using this in the problem shortly. The other equivalency we have is not P or Q gives us the same results as not P and not Q. And we'll be using both of these logical equivalents to solve the problem. So let's return to the problem statement. We'll begin by getting rid of the fractions in this first equation by multiplying both sides by 210. We're going to replace all of these statements with variables. So let's call the statement P to represent the statement that the GCD of A and 14 is equal to 1. Q means the GCD of B and 15 is 1. And R means the GCD of C and 210 is 1. Let's start with the statement labeled 3. And we'll replace this statement with our variables. So we have this first one is R, if and only if, P and Q, which we abbreviate like this. Again, if and only if is represented as a double arrow, and we'll need to split this up for the two directions of the implication. We'll call part A, R implies P and Q. We'll replace this with its contrapositive, not P and Q, implies not R. Earlier, we found the logical equivalent to not P and Q, so we can replace this 
with not P or not Q. And this is what we're gonna prove in part A. Part B has this going in the opposite direction. So P and Q implies R. We'll replace this with its contrapositive. Not R implies not P and Q. And then earlier we found the logical equivalence and replace this with not P or not Q. So let's start with part A. We're gonna show that not P or not Q implies not R. Not P is just the negation of the earlier statement. So here we have the GCD of A and 14 is not equal to one. And likewise for not Q and not R. If the GCD of A and 14 is not one, that means they share a factor in common. The factors of 14 are two and seven, which means that A is either gonna have a two or at least one 7 in its prime factorization. So at least one of these exponents of 2 and 7 is going to be positive. Here we have that b shares a factor with 15, which means it has either a 3 or a 5 or both in its prime factorization. So we have something for b that looks like this with at least one of these exponents being positive. Our first equation was that c is equal to 15a plus 14b. We'll substitute for a and b, and we'll pull out these primes. So 15 is 3 times 5, and then multiplied by a. So we'll have the presence of either a 2 or a 7 or both, and some other primes. Our second term, 14b, is going to have a 2 and a 7, and then one of either 3 or 5 in its prime factorization. If we have a 2 or 7 in a, we'll be able to factor it with the 2 or 7 in our second term. Likewise, if we have a 3 or 5 in b, we'll be able to factor out either the 3 or the 5 or both from both of these terms. We don't need both not p and not q for this to be true. As long as one of them has one of the factors that I mentioned, then we'll be able to factor out at least one of these four primes. If we can do that, these four primes all divide 210. So we have that the GCD of C and 210 is not going to be 1. And this is our statement R. So, so far, for statement 3, the first part, this is going to be true. Let's take a look at 3 part b. Here we're going to show that not r implies not p or not q. So we're given not r, which is that the GCD of c and 210 is not equal to 1. This means that c has at least one of the primes, 2, 3, 5, or 7. And from the equation, we have that this is equal to 15a plus 14b. Whatever these primes happen to be, we should be able to pull them out from both of these terms, which means we've either got a 2 and a 7 in our A or a 3 or a 5 in our B. That means either A or B cannot be relatively primed to 14 or 15 respectively. This is our statement not P and this is our statement not Q. They don't both have to be true because we already have a 2 and a 7 in the second statement and a 3 and a 5 in the first statement. So this is true and that's the second part of statement 3. Let's go back to statement 2. Replacing this with variables, we have if r, then p or q. The or symbol is an inclusive or. This means that if both statements are true, then this is also true. Rewriting this with our shorthand, we have r implies p or q. We'll replace this with the contrapositive, not p or q implies not r and its logic identity, that is not P and not Q implies not R. Recall from statement three, part A, we showed not P or not Q implies not R. Since these two statements are very similar, we can drop a really quick truth table with all possible combinations of not P and not Q. Here is our or statement. This is true if one or the other or both are true. Here's our and statement. This is only true if both of them are true. We showed that if not P or not Q is true, then we have not R is true. You can see that not P and not Q is a subset of not P or not Q. So if we have that this is true, not R is also going to be true. So we have that statement two is also true. Let's go to statement one. The first part of our statement has an or. This is P or Q. If P or Q, then we replace with a right arrow. This is our statement R. So P or Q implies R is what we want to show. We'll replace this with its contrapositive, which is not R implies not P or Q. And we'll replace the second half with its logical equivalent, not P and not Q. We'll start with the statement not R, which means the GCD of C and 210 is not equal to one. This means that C shares a factor with 210. From the prime factorization of 210, it means it has to have at least one of these four primes. Recall that earlier with statement three, the second part, we showed that not R implies 
size, not P or not Q, which means it showed that either one of these had to be true, but not necessarily both. In this case, we're going to try to show that we don't necessarily need both of these in order to be true. If you look back at your notes for 3 part B, you'll be able to see that this isn't true. And we can confirm that by picking a value of C. So we'll choose a C that shares a factor with with 210 so that it shares a factor of 14 but not 15. And since this is our equation, we want to make it big enough so that we can find multiples of 15 and 14 to add up to it. So let's choose C is equal to 86. This is 2 times 43. Its GCD with 210 is not 1 because it shares a factor of 2. If I pick an A that's even, I'm going to be able to pull out a 2 from these first two terms. So let's choose A is equal to 2. If we do that, we have 86 is 30 plus 14B. So here we have not R, and then this one is not P. Solving for B, we get B is equal to 4. The GCD of B and 15 then is equal to 1. This is our statement Q. If we have not R, we do not require both not P and not Q. In this example, I had not P, but I also had Q. So this statement one is false. So our statements two and three were true, and our answer is E. If you'd like me to solve any other math contest problems, please leave them in the comments.